Welcome to another Laravel tutorial. If you follow my previous lesson and you did the homework that I asked you to do, you probably have something like that. Every page changes or actually just the title changes, but this change is defined by a condition, a switch case or an if statement, else if, whatever you want to do it, that checks the request path that we're getting and in case of different pages return different page titles and then we're passing the variable page title to the static page page view. So this is okay if you have something really, really simple and really uh, like not scalable, not updatable, something like that. It's really like hard coded. It's not a great example on how Laravel should be used. It was just to let you understand how the request handles all our information, how to dynamically use one single template to print different pages. The proper approach to these would be to have uh, something in the database, like a list of pages that we can update the title, the content, or whatever other information and attributes we can have inside our database. And then we dynamically grab that specific page based on the slug of the page from the database and then print the data dynamically inside our page. So that's what we're gonna do today. But before doing that, we need to understand how Laravel interacts with the database and how to dynamically create database tables and edit all the things inside our database through migrations. So first of all, we need to connect to a database and you should have a database that it's uh, MySQL, MariaDB or SQLite, whatever you want to use it, you have to have installed up and running. I already have it installed locally and if I access it, I have my database called Laravel, but as you can see, it's completely empty. There's not a single content, there's not a single table, nothing. It's just completely empty, but it's there. So now I need to connect to the database. Laravel handles all these external connection, all these things, all these data and attributes inside the env file. The env file is the environmental file that Laravel uses whenever you need to connect to an external site. So let's customize the env a little bit and try to understand why it's important. First of all, we have a bunch of initial attributes for our local application. So we have our app name that can be whatever. So I can call it like uh, forum tutorials. Then the environmental variable that tells Laravel if this is a local staging production and you can change this however you want. We can reference all these globally defined environmental variables inside our application to check if we want to do something. So these local, it's correct. Whenever we're going to push in on a production side or a staging side, we're going to dynamically change this and I'm going to show you how to do it later in this series. The app debug is equal through. So whenever we have an error, we have that super fancy explanation of all the the full stack of the mistakes and whatever something went wrong if we push to production of course this app debug should be set to false the app key that is automatically generated when we install composer for the first time when we install laravel for the first time we can always regenerate this key if something goes wrong if it's completely empty by using our terminal and use the artisan by saying php artisan key column generate and automatically this method should generate a key and here I have an error that sorry about that I didn't consider but basically the EMV doesn't accept spaces so here I call the forum tutorials shouldn't be that it should be like forum dash tutorial it doesn't accept spaces or if you want spaces you should put it as as a string but here now if I want to run PHP artisan key generate application key sex successfully the key was updated that is a base 64 key that is necessary for Laravel. We can specify the app URL in my case, the HTTPS forum.dev. This is gonna be great if you wanna dynamically reference the homepage or the index or the default URL whenever we do something through the global app URL. Log channel stack, we're gonna see how to log things down below. That's what we're here for, connecting to our database. My connection is MySQL, my host is local, the port is correct, uh, my database name is Laravel, my DB username is root, and my password is admin. So now I set up my database connection. And that's it, that was really straightforward, really easy, right? So now how do we tell Laravel to, hey, populate this thing, like start populating this database with all our tables and information? 
you could think that maybe we could just simply say, hey, um, create table and start like writing MySQL queries or SQL queries inside our terminal or whatever application we do. Or, like we manually create tables and columns and stuff like that. Nope. Laravel takes care of this thanks to the migrations, an amazing interface that we can write in PHP in order to handle our database in a sort of like version control fashion, which is super, super handy. So if we open our database folder here and we check the migration subfolder, we already by default should have a couple of files. And these couple of files, first they are titled with a date format like here, month, day, and then the time of the creation, and then the name of the file and the action that whatever action is happening inside this file, and this file is called create user table. You can see the name create underscore users underscore table is exactly the same as the class. This is super cool by Laravel, it's gonna do this automatically for us. And here inside these files, we have two methods the up method and the down method. And in the app method, where basically it's like writing SQL queries in PHP to create the table that we want. In our case, we're creating the users table. And inside here, we are uh, adding an ID, name, email verified, password, the remember token, the timestamp, create and update it. So Laravel gives us the ability, thanks to the blueprint class, to tap the database and set it up via PHP, which is super fantastic. You could think that as a first time, oh, this is an overkill. This feels kind of stupid because I'm doing two extra things. Instead of directly accessing the database and updating my things, I'm writing PHP before and then I have to run PHP in order to handle it. But if you get used to the migrations, it's great. It's easy to use and it's easy to share your migrations across multiple Laravel installations or multiple coworkers. So let's take a look on how to generate our database tables to handle our pages. First, let's create a migration. So let's open the terminal. You know, let's say PHP artisan make column migration and the name of the migration has to be all lowercase and every single word separated by a dash. So let's say I want to create a migration, uh, create underscore pages underscore table, hit enter. Perfect. As you can see, automatically Laravel grabs the current date and the timestamp of the date, generates the file if we open our code editor here. In the migrations folder, we already have this super cool file that Laravel pre-populated for us. And look at that, the class name perfectly reflects the name of the file. That's how Laravel matches this thing. We already have all the classes that we're gonna use and we already have the public function up and the public function down pre-filled for us. And these two methods are great because automatically tapping the schema of our database generates the pages with an ID and a timestamp and in the down function drop the pages table if it exists. So instead of editing this, why don't we run this migration and we see what happens in our database. So if we open once again our terminal and we say simply, hey, PHP artisan migrate. And there you go, the migration should be successful. Here we have the full list of all the migration that happened in our database. So if we open once again our database and we refresh the list of tables, boom, look what we have here. We have the users table, the passwords reset, the pages and the migrations, all the things that Laravel created for us thanks to those PHP files. The pages is what we created. So in, inside the pages, we have the ID and the created at and updated at two timestamps that automatically Laravel will take care of updating whenever a new data is inserted. Of course, when we create a new data, the created at will be updated. Whenever the data is updated, the updated at will be updated. Of course, that totally makes sense. One of the most important things to remember here that Laravel keeps track of all the migrations inside the database itself. That's why I said this is a sort of like version control because all the migration that we run are stored inside the database in different batches. So if something goes wrong, for example, now we run another migration and there's an error, we can always roll back and roll back the state of our database to our previous batch. So let's say that, yes, I migrated my pages, but I completely forgot to add the title and description of the page that should be a blob. So instead of manually editing, creating another migration to 
update this table, why don't we roll back this migration, we reset our database and we see how to update this thing. So to reset a migration, we can simply say PHP artisan migrate column rollback. If we hit that automatically, if everything goes smoothly, we are rolling back the migration. So if we go back in our database and we refresh, look at that. Now we don't have any more the pages, uh, the users, the password recovery, all those things because we're rolled back, we're migrated back. And in fact, inside the migration, we don't have anything, which is super cool. It's a version control for our database. So now inside our create pages, instead of just simply adding the table and incrementing the ID and the timestamp, let's also create a column name and a column description for our page. So we can tap the table class and tap the method string. We want to generate a new string and the name of the string should be title because we want the page title. And then we want to create a description or some content. So let's create a table called in this case long text and we can call these uh, content or description or however you want. All these unique methods that are part of the blueprint class are available inside the Laravel documentation related to the migrations. You can find the link to that specific section of the documentation in the description below this video. But if you have a little bit of experience with SQL, you probably notice that all these statements or these methods name are identical. They match identically those SQL content type that we have in our database. So let's save this file and just to quickly touch upon the down method is what gets called when we reverse the migration, when we roll back the migration, what we did before. That's why the pages table disappear because we have in this method the drop if exists the pages table. Inside here, of course, you can do whatever you want. You can empty the database before you can export the data before dropping it or whatever. You can take care of handling whatever happens when your database changes before you actually apply those changes, which is really great. So now that we updated our table, let's run once again our migration. Let's open back our terminal. Let's run again PHP artisan migrate. Perfect. Everything went smoothly. Let's go back in our database. Let's refresh. We have once again all our three tables, the migration, the content. Let's refresh this view. Perfect. First batch of our content. We have our three migrations. And if we access the pages, we go in the structure. Now we have the ID, the title, the content, created at and updated at. Perfect. This is what I wanted. So I'm going to stop right here for this tutorial because I don't want to overwhelm you too much. I suggest you to start getting used to run migration. Just test it, like create different migrations, run them, create a rollback, try to um, use and get comfortable with all the different methods of the table blueprint and create your own custom migration. And of course, you can also check the default migrations that come with Laravel. For example, here, this is really cool. We have these in the users table, the email string column that has to be unique. So you can tap unique method and say, hey, this column is unique or the timestamp can be nullable. So we can have a null value inside that specific column, which is fantastic. In the next lesson, we're going to take a look on how to create a model and complete our model view controller type of structure of Laravel to tap the pages and handle the pages content via Laravel in a dynamic way. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.